dying, Christ destroyed our death. But by rising, Christ restored our life. Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, olive put on Christ. So in Christ, may she, may she be clothed in glory. Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. But what we shall be has not yet been revealed. But what we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Those who have this hope purify themselves as Christ is pure. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And because I live, you shall live also. Family and friends, welcome to this celebration of life for Olive Pierce. We thank you for being here and sharing in this tribute in someone who lived a good and long and full life. We have gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate her life. Yes, we also come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss, but we are indeed grateful that we can still feel her presence with us. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Let us pray. O God, who gave us birth, you are more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Give to us now your grace that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. Help us to love as those who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, enable us to die as those who go forth to live, so that living or dying, our life may be in you, and that nothing in life or in death, will be able to separate us from your great love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. One of Olive's favorite verses comes from Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish each other in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. We will now have one such song, one such hymn that describes Olive's connection with her God from Sharon Smith.
This remembrance is written by her daughter, Mary Ann, and I have the privilege of getting to read this. She filled our lives with laughter and music. She loved us, fed us, and made us better people. She will be remembered for her friendships, generosity, strength, and industry. As we look at the photos on the screen, let them remind us of the entirety of her 92 years, showing her accomplishments and her bright smile. Olive was born on May 29th, 1929, to Ethel and Edgar Craddock of Williamsburg. She joined sisters Azil and Jane and many Craddock neighbors. Born at the beginning of the Depression and growing up in Butte in a humble home during World War II shaped her life. She was a worker. Many times she said, I always had a job when I wanted one. She sold hats, men's clothes, and furniture and worked in the Safeway and Continental Oil Gas Companies. She worked tirelessly, either leading or performing fundraisers, making pies, pasties, blarney stones, povotitsas. Did I say that right? Povotitsas. She was involved in many Butte organizations. As you know, Eastern Star, Red Hats, and Cornish Club, not only as a member, but often as a founder or leader. She was twice honored as a Montana Standard Woman of Distinction because of her volunteer efforts. She loved to cook and to entertain. Often her house was filled with Army, Anaconda Company friends, Masons, Montana Tech students, Organ Club, neighbors, forever friends, and most recently our monthly girls dinner group. Laverne talks of all the fun times the forever friends had lunching and gathering around her organ to sing. She was a mother to many. Dorothy talks of learning about life from her. Irv Pierce says she was the only mother he had. Barbara Clark reflects on her important role in her life. Even old boyfriends of Mary Ann would stop to see her and of course, she would feed them and make them feel important. She was Grandma Olive to the Johnson girls. She was generous, helping many with education. Dave Archer said she helped my children with education. Look at what seeds she's planting. Through the Olive Pierce Scholarship at MSU, every year she will educate deserving engineering students just as she did for Mary Ann. She attended Unity Methodist Church in Meterville and transferred to Aldersgate when the family moved to Amherst. For many years she attended adult Sunday school at Aldersgate with other Meterville folks. She worked with youth groups, PTA, Brownies, Girl Scouts, Rainbow Girls, Job's Daughters, and Demolay. 
Initially, the work was in support of Marianne, but continued long after Marianne moved from Butte. She was mentally strong and handled her problems. Marianne remembers coming home from school and finding her in the basement under the kitchen. She said, the water to the kitchen sink is frozen, and if your dad comes home, he'll want me to help him fix it. But I want to go to Eastern Star. So she lit the Burnsmatic torch, thawed the pipe, wrapped it, fixed dinner, put on a formal, and went to Star. She was smart and tough. She told Pastor Matthias, me, about the time when she was 14 years old and she took her dad's car to drive uptown to run errands for her mother. I don't know if this was a confession. Huh. It didn't. When the pastor asked how she learned to drive, she answered, I just watched others. And this was back in the day with different kinds of cars, right? She loved music, taking piano and organ lessons for 20 years. After serving as worthy matron of Ruth chapter number two, she served as organist. She, also, she was also an organist at Unity Truth Center and spent countless hours playing at senior living centers. She shared her love of music with her niece, Mary, who for the last few years played the piano for Olive to listen to over the phone. Her love of music extended to attending performances at the Mother Lode Theater, where she shared happy evenings with Kitty and the Heinrichs. Olive married Bill Pierce on September 15, 1949. After, that, after they met on a blind date arranged by her sister, Jane. They moved to Fort Lewis, Washington, but returned to Butte as soon as their army commitment was satisfied. They built a life together. One area of responsibility was she loved to cook and he loved to eat. One year when the apple tree was prolific, she baked 50 apple pies. When David commented on her accomplishment, Bill responded, do you think it was easy eating those 50 pies? <laughs> she always went along with Bill and Mary Ann's fishing, excuse me, she always went along with Bill and Mary Ann's fishing and camping. It is possible she may have enjoyed something else more, but she cooked and cleaned fish and made us family. When Mary Ann needed a fresh blood sample to show under her microscope, she pricked her finger all evening at the science fair. She built a life for herself after Bill died. Dorothy tells of picking her up at the airport upon return from spending her first Christmas in Houston without Bill. She said, that's it. I'm over grieving and I'm moving on with life. She joined the YMCA increased her music and entertaining. She so enjoyed travel going to Cornwall, Cornwall twice, Paris, Canada, and all across the U.S. with Dorothy and Marianne and David. She would do anything from, from flying over the Grand Canyon to gondola rides in Vermont. She especially enjoyed U.S. riverboat cruises. Her directness extended to requiring good behavior. She used the look to stop childhood bad behavior. The look was developed by her mother, passed to Olive, and now to the next generation. Another story. After Marianne discovered an English Christmas pudding buried in the back of her freezer, she called her to ask what she did with hers. She replied, we ate it at Christmas. What did you do with yours? That discipline came with unending support and encouragement. One day when Marianne was in her late 40s, a box arrived containing a woman's running trophy with a note. 
You always try so hard. I thought you should have a trophy, Mom. <laughs> she loved a party and was always having a party. She had some great ones too, 25th and 50th anniversaries and 80 and 90th birthday parties. Her 90th was a special gift to all who attended. She spent Thanksgiving with Neil and Dorothy, Mother's Day with Mary and Dick, and often Easter with the Olsons. Yes, she enjoyed a glass of wine or Jack Daniels with friends. Olive, Marianne and David shared a special love and many happy times traveling and in Butte and in Houston with family and friends. One Thanksgiving visit be began with their suitcase coming off the luggage turnstile covered with frost. It was full of pasties, pies, candy, and breadsticks. A lot of people in Houston have eaten her pa pasties. She often said, I was born in Butte, and I want to die in Butte. And that she did. And our beloved Butte surrounded us with their love. She could not have stayed in Butte without the dedication of Dorothy and Neil Duddy. The love she showed to so many came back to her through her life, but especially during the last couple of years. At least for David and Marianne, she is the end of a generation. She left quite a standard for us to live up to. Thank you, Marianne. As some of you already know, Olive treasured the scriptures, and I share with you three at this time. First one is from Romans 12, 10. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. The second is from 1 Peter 4. Above all, maintain constant love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Hmm. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. And the third is from 1 Corinthians 13. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. It is clear with these scriptures that Olive's theme for life was all about love. And by the grace of God, may we be constant in love with one another. And may we be hospitable with one another. And this last part is really tough. Not complaining? I truly appreciate when the family can hand me certain scriptures from their loved one. Scriptures that not only inspired Olive in her walk with God, it uh, inspired her and empowered her to be who she was called to be and to do what she was called to do. Olive was not only strong in her faith, she was strong and demanding. But at the same time, that she did so, she simply did this as being supportive of what was needed at the time. And as you know, this is a delicate balance to hold and I'll, to, and, and she did this because that's who she was. One of my favorite memories of sitting with Olive was the story that Marianne told you in her eulogy about stealing her dad's car. With the, without permission to run these errands. And when she told me the story, she had a gleam in her eye and she knew exactly what she was doing and that she wasn't supposed to. <laughs> but another precious memory of a more serious nature was when I prayed the 23rd Psalm with her. And she prayed most 
of the 23rd Psalm from memory. It's special, and it was special to pray the Lord's Prayer with her, but it was indeed extra special to pray Psalm 23 with her. And so I'd like to invite you, for those of you that know this prayer, I'm going to be using the King James Version, and I'd like it to just be in an attitude of prayer as we pray this 23rd Psalm together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Before you begin, Marianne told me just before that this was the last song that she heard Olive sing to us. And I was glad that she reminded us that that's why we have In the Garden at this yeah. time. I did um, go to, uh, when I'd visit her, I would usually try to sing a song and, and you know, she would join in, so it was always great.
Thank you, Sharon, and thank you, Richard. Let us pray. O gracious and everlasting God, God of love, hope, peace, and joy, we give thanks for the life of Olive Pierce, who loved not only her family, but her church family and her community. We give thanks for the body of Christ who walked with Olive and cared for her and she for them. May we never take our siblings in Christ for granted as we seek a deeper and deeper relationship to you this day and every day. When the disciples did not know how to pray, Jesus gave them these words in which we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Mary Ann wanted me to make sure that I shared these thank yous with you. Everyone who attended the celebration of Olive's life, especially those who traveled. Members of Aldersgate and for their many visits to Olive and for this service. The Johnsons and the Duddies who cared for Olive and Marianne. Our family who was loyal to the end. And our Butte friends who have surrounded us with their love. There is no place like Butte. She would want us to move on just like she did when Bill died. She would want us to remember the music, the laughter, strength. So please join us in the fellowship hall for lunch and a time to share a few more stories. From Marianne and David. So following the benediction, uh, the casket will be placed into the funeral coach and then immediately following that, we will be joining, uh, and the reception line will be for the family in the gym. So just keep that in mind that the, uh, our, our time together in fellowship with food will be immediately after the, fun uh, the casket is put into the funeral coach. So let us pray for the blessing for this time. Oh God, we know that there is new life springing up all around us. And may we continue with an attitude of new life. That following death, there is resurrection. Bless this time together. As we nurture one another, as we love one another, and as we share stories of our experience with Olive. May this time be truly blessed. In your name we pray, amen. And following the reception, for those that would join us at the Mount Moriah Cemetery, we'll be meeting there at two o'clock uh, for the burial. Would you please rise for the benediction? And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you this peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding today, tomorrow, and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.